Good evening hobby fans. In this video I'm going to tell you how to paint an Eldar from the craft world of Mimira. Or is it Mimira? First I'll show you the equipment I used. These are all the paints I've used for this project. Um, I'll put a full list in the description below and you can even use the uh, Element Games affiliate link to pick them all up if you so wish. However, I don't think they sell snakes. So first of all you want your actual miniature and then you need to attach him or her to a suitable base. I've used the original 25mm round base that it came with. When it comes to priming, I use an airbrush primer. I use this Vallejo surface primer in black, but any primer will do. You can use a rattle can perhaps, or even brush it on. So here we have the mini. I've added a little bit of texture to the base and I have undercoated the miniature. Then you're going to need some white paint. I myself are using Vallejo model color white. I've given my Eldar a zenithal highlight using an airbrush and sprayed the model from the top down and at a slight angle to give the model some highlights and shading before I begin the painting process. You don't have to do this, it is an optional step. I apologise for interrupting, but I really would appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. You can even support the channel by joining the Patreon page, the link to which is in the description Hello. I'll let you get back to it. The first colour I use is Vallejo model colour light turquoise, which is a nice greeny blue colour. I give the entire model a couple of coats of the turquoise. Make sure you give it plenty of time to dry. Next up, we're going to need a shade, and in this case, I'm using Coelia Green Shade by Citadel Paints. Give the entire model an all over wash of the Coelia green shade. Try and work it into all those recesses. Next up, you're going to need a black paint. In this case, I'm using Vallejo model color black. Gives a really nice matte finish. Probably my favorite black on the market. Using your black paint, give the helmet an all over coat. If it's a bit thin and patchy, you might want to give it a couple. The next colour you're going to need is a good silver paint. I'm using Vallejo Model Air Gunmetal, although something similar will do. Something like Lead Belcher by Citadel perhaps. Apply this silver colour to all the parts of the miniature that you want to be silver. I've done the chainmail undersuit and a few pipes here and there. The next colour we need is a good base white. For this I'm using Corax white. It has a reputation for going gunky over time so always keep an eye on it and make sure that lid is shut properly. In this case it's not. Using your Corax white paint all the areas that are going to be white. In this case I just painted the weapon and the little hilt protruding underneath his hand there. The next colour you're going to need is purple, and in this case I'm using Vallejo model colour Violet. This is a really, really nice purple colour. Using the purple I paint a few of the waystones. I didn't want to paint all of them because that would have been very, very time intensive. I just wanted to paint a few to break up the surface of the model. There's a big one on the back, uh, one either side of the weapon and a really nice prominent one on his chest. You're going to need a black wash next and I've decided to use what's left of my Citadel Nuln Oil. This stuff really is brilliant. Take your black wash and wash all of the metal parts we painted earlier and around the waystones that we just painted purple. The next shade paint you're going to need is a sepia or light brown shade. In this case I've gone with Seraphim Sepia from Citadel. 
a real quick and easy step this one just give the white weapon and any other white areas that you may have painted a shade with the seraphim sepia now we need to return to our original base color in this case it's the vallejo model color light turquoise Reapply this base colour to all the armour areas of the miniature and try your best to avoid the recesses where the shade had settled from the shade coat. Now take some white and make a mix of two part light turquoise to one part white. Using your new mix, paint a thick and kind of chunky highlight around the edge of the armor panels. Try and be as tidy as you possibly can. This will help later on. Again, we're going to want the light turquoise and the white, but this mix is going to be two parts white to one part light turquoise. Using this new mix, apply a very thin highlight around the very edges of the armor plates. You're now going to need a lighter silver colour than your original base silver. In my case, I've gone with Vallejo Model Air Chrome as it's got really good coverage and goes on really smooth. Using your lighter silver, or in this case the chrome, just do a few highlights on all the metal areas. I've selected a few ribs of the pipework, a few parts of the chain mail, and some of the veins on his mouth grill. Next up, we're going to do a highlight mix of black and white. We're going to need three parts black to one part white. With your black and white mix, do a very liberal chunky highlight on the black areas. Try and stick to areas which would catch the most light. In this case, the top of the helmet. Another black and white mix this time. In this case, it's going to be two parts black to one part white. With this black and white gray color mix, paint the edges of the black areas as neatly as you can, leaving a nice thin highlight. Yet again, we're going back to the black and white mix, but this time it's going to be one part black to two parts white for our final layer. With this new light gray mix, paint a very thin highlight around all the black areas. The thinner you can keep this highlight line, the better. Now we're going to need our white paint again. With your white paint, try your best to be neat and paint in the eyes. Next up, we're going to want a yellow glaze. In this case, I've used Lamenta's yellow, but any yellow ink or thinned yellow paint should do the job. Apply this yellow glaze to the white eyes you've just painted. You might need to give these two or three thin coats. Make sure you let them dry in between. Again, we're going to return to our white paint. Using our white paint and a fine tipped brush and a good steady hand, just dot in the center of the eyes for a little highlight. If it goes wrong, just reapply the previous steps. Here's a surprise. You're going to need that white paint again for another highlight. And I bet you can't guess what we're going to highlight. Take your white paint, thin it down just enough so it's smooth, and then highlight all the sepia washed areas on the weapon. Try to be as neat as you can. Next up, we're going to return to our purple color. In this case, Vallejo model color, violet. Reapply the violet to all the waystones that we painted purple earlier. Again, being neat really is the key. The next thing you're going to need is your black paint again. In this case, Vallejo model color black. Using your black paint, paint the top third of the waystones in a kind of crescent shape. We'll do a separate tutorial on these later. 
Next up, take your purple and your white, and this time make a mix of two parts purple to one part white. Do your best to try and highlight your waystones away from the black side with your new highlight mix. This time we're going to swap the mix and use two parts white to one part purple. Trying to be as neat as possible, do an even thinner highlight beside the previous step. Now we're going to return to our white paint, in this case Vallejo model colour white. Using your white paint, do a final highlight at the very extreme part of your previous highlights and then try and paint a tiny white little dot inside the black corner of the waystone. This will give you a nice reflection effect. For a secret little trick, we're going to need some gloss varnish. And in this case, I've used some Vallejo polyurethane gloss varnish. Apply the gloss varnish as neatly as you can to all the gemstones we've painted previously and make sure you let it dry thoroughly. This will give you a lovely reflection effect. And there you have it, a really easy and simple My Mira or My Miara Craft World Eldar. All I've done is gone in and finished it with an old hammer style base. We'll have a tutorial for doing these as well shortly. Well that wasn't too hard was it? I hope that helps. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and always remember to drill your barrels. There's a seagull outside.